Hey, hello and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to deploy a Next.js 13 app on AWS using Zit. Zit is the fastest way I've seen to deploy production applications. With just a few clicks, I was able to get my apps running on AWS without much setup. It's easy to use and saves a lot of time. Also, a problem that comes with deploying and managing apps on AWS and other cloud providers is the cost you can incur if you don't do it right. And this is another place where Zit shines. It helps in managing your application cost and in making sure that you don't spend more than you need. You can use it to deploy and manage Node.js apps, React applications, Next, Python, and Golang apps. Zit works with cloud providers, including AWS and GCP. This is a Next.js setting app I built with GraphQL, and I need to deploy it on AWS to make it easily scalable and for access to other AWS related services. So we're going to be using Zit for this. Now, first thing I want to do when I come over to zit.co is hit the sign up button. Next, I can choose to create my account with Google, GitHub or Metamax. I want to continue with GitHub to make it easy to access my repositories. And look at that. Hey, you welcome to Zit, the missing link between your code and your cloud. Create your Zit team to get started. I've used Team Ebenezer Dawn before, so I'm going to make this Team Ebenezer Dawn 2 and I'll hit continue. What is my role? I'm going to choose developer on a small team. Continue. Tell us about the scope of your project. Well, let's say it's a side project. A better cloud console is here. Create your experience. Pick how you want to use it. So we want to use it to deploy applications, um, to explore, save, and link your GitHub to IAM and audit team permissions. I think all, all of these options make sense. So I'll hit continue next. And let's help you deploy your project on your cloud as quickly as possible. And we have the option of deploying a sample, but we've already got our next year's project. So let's hit, I've got my own and deploy my own repo. So the next thing we're going to do is connect um, to our GitHub account. So right here we have connect to your source control to build and deploy. We also have the option to deploy any Docker image from a container registry and we can deploy a managed database. What we want right now is to deploy from our GitHub account. So I'm going to click GitHub right there and look at that. We have next year's GraphQL multi app, or we can decide to search for any particular repo we want, or we can just hit deploy on this particular next year's app that we want to deploy today. So I'll hit the deploy button right here. And next we have the project settings, serverless, deploy serverless applications to your cloud platform or we can deploy Docker. So deploy your application to Zit managed Kubernetes clusters. For serverless, we have immediate deployment, free to start, automatically scale your application. So I'm going to hit serverless right now. And we have this default setup for networking. Listen port is 3000. And checking this will create the project in post state for you to configure more complex settings. But we don't need this for now. So I'm just going to hit continue. And the next thing we have is the overview and deploy. So project source right here, we have the Next.js GraphQL multi-app repo. And then we have the project name as Next.js GraphQL multi-app. We're deploying to the production environment. And app name right here is Next.js GraphQL multi-app. You can decide to change this to anything you want. Next, I'm going to hit continue. And we have this page for connecting a cloud infrastructure provider. So there's the option of connecting AWS, Amazon Web Services, and GCP, Google Cloud Provider. If you have other cloud providers in mind, currently you can decide to pick them right here and let Zit know that these are your cloud providers. These are some of the providers you want on the Zit platform. So if you hit submit right now, they get the feedback and you can also join the Zit Discord community to see what's going on. Right now we have access to AWS and we have access to GCP. So let's hit AWS right here and to give Zit permission to deploy into your AWS account, simply paste your AWS account ID below. If you don't know what that means, Zit also provides documentation for that. So if you click this link, how to connect your AWS account, we get a guide for this. So look at what we have right here. Connect your AWS account. In the upper right hand corner of your AWS account, click on your username and copy the 12 digit AWS account ID. Now let's go over to AWS and do that. So over to aws.amazon.com, I'm going to hit sign into the console. And since I already have an AWS account, I'm going to type my username. If you don't have an AWS account, you can hit the create a new AWS account button and you have your AWS account set up for you. 
Now back to the login page, my email address and password, then sign in. To connect my AWS account with Seeds, I'm going to hit my name right here, Ebenezer Don, and look at my account ID. I hit the copy button and back to Zid, I'm going to paste my AWS account ID, then click add. You can also select the region you want or leave it at US East 2, which is the default. Then you click authorize with I am. Right on the AWS page, we have quick create stack, template, stack name, and you can edit this to whatever you want, but I'm going to leave everything as default. The next thing we're going to do is hit I acknowledge that AWS CloudFormation might create IAM resources with custom names. So let's hit that button and then create stack. Now all we need to do is wait a few seconds or a few minutes for this to be done. And we have the create complete message. So back to it. You can see that it shows a green check mark for connected. Next thing we're going to do is hit deploy now. So we'll wait a few seconds for that. And while we wait, you can see the default options on this page. What kind of project do you have? Build method is Next.js. If you're working with any other stack um, or any other framework or language, you can choose it right here. We have a Node.js, Python. Um, custom build for Ubuntu, Dockerfile, Django, Golang, Elixir, and so on. The Node.js version for our application is 16, root directory, optional right here, and then the run command is npm run start. When we scroll down, we can also see the environment variables section. So you can choose to add any environment variable you want for your application, and you can click the add more button to add more environment variables, or you can just upload your .env file and you get your environment variables updated for you, which is really cool. And look at that. Congratulations, your project is successfully deployed. And now we have the overview page for our deployed application. A look at the endpoint right here. We can click on it to see what our application looks like. Our application is deployed successfully. So these are Next.js 13, a Next slash GraphQL, Rick and Morty character app. You can check it out right away. I'm going to leave a link to this application in the description of this video. So right now the domain name might not be that friendly because it's made up of random characters, but you can also change this in your application settings. So if you come over to settings and you click networking, you can see the option to add a custom domain. So right here, you can add your domain name.com and set that up with your domain provider and you'll have your own custom domain name for your AWS application hosted and managed through Zit. You can also visit the general tab to update your project setting, including your environment variables. So here you can add your environment variables if you want. And currently our application is allocated the memory size of 128 MB. You can choose to update this here. You can choose to make it 500 MB with 0.5 or one gigabyte. When you change the memory settings, you can see the estimated cloud cost right here is also updated. So this means that for every 17.04 hours, you spend $1. And with our previous setting of 0.128, for every 133.14 hours, we spend $1. For 0.5, for every 34.08 hours, we spend $1. So this is a really cool way to manage costs when it comes to your application. And you can also visit this save tab right here to see more on managing the cost of your project. So right here, we have our AWS account selected, largest cost changes forecasted, and the forecasted costs below are monthly and extrapolated based on this month's usage. For this month, tax right here is $0.01, that's estimated Amazon EC2 container $0. And look at this right here, AWS Cost Explorer $0.14 estimated. If you want to create a new project, you hit this create new button on the top right and you can choose to deploy your code or container, create a database, deploy a Helm chart on Kubernetes, deploy a Terraform module. And more importantly, if you need any help, feel free to click this button right here. I used it when I was setting up my Zit account. You click this button for a quick chat with um, the Zit team. Right here was where I was asking about the save page and I got help with that. So the team is really cool when it comes to responding to your queries. When you click on clouds, you can manage cloud connections and add a new AWS account if you want, or connect with other cloud providers like GCP, DigitalOcean, CoreWeave, and Linode. 
this is really cool and i've enjoyed working with seed for my application deployment and management so give this a shot deploy your applications on aws using seed whether you're a beginner intermediate or advanced you can start without any cost and you can easily scale your application and that's it for deploying a next year setting up on aws using seed let me know in the comment section um, if you have any questions about it, you can also join the Z Discord server. And when you deploy your application, please share it with me in the comments section also. I'd love to check it out. See you in my next video.